Actually, this is how I dressed in high school. It was an inner city school and I was beaten every day. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I want to say first of all, hello Simpsons fans, the most amazing fans in the world. You're incredible. All the Simpsons fans are together. You're all Simpsons fans. Except for these people right here. They're season ticket holders. They don't know what the Simpsons are. They're the one percent of the one percent. They're down here. They, they don't even know the Simpsons are on tonight. They're here to see the Miami Sound Machine. They're eating huge turkey dinners, drinking absinthe out of paper cups. Who is this horrible man in that red coat? Why are they showing cartoons? <laughs> you all get yours. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, some of you may know that I was a writer on The Simpsons. <laughs> That was a long time ago. The Simpsons was a radio show back then. I sized things up pretty quickly and I realized this show is not gonna last. Being the genius I am, I left Fox soon afterwards for the relative safety and sense of mutual trust I could find at NBC. Thank you. But I cherish my time at The Simpsons. It was absolutely fantastic. Best writing room you can ever imagine. Brilliant minds. It was just an incredible journey. When I was on The Simpsons, I wrote an episode that haunts me to this day. I wrote an episode. Now, I've done some stuff since then, gang. In the last 21 years, I've hosted one of 15 late night talk shows. 12 in the last two years. <laughs> I like to hop around a little bit. But that's not the point. The point is I've done some stuff. Simpsons fans don't care. No matter what I do, they come out of a crowd when they see me and they come up and they go, ah, and I'm like, that's right, Mr. Late Night. And they're like, no man, monorail. <laughs> giving birth, I'm cutting the umbilical cord. Monorail, man! <laughs> yes, that episode uh, has haunted me to this day. I'm very proud of it. It combined three things that I'm fascinated with. Bad ideas for mass transit of the future. <laughs> Bad Irwin Allen movies of the 1970s. And my favorite musical of all time, The Music Man. <laughs> but we needed someone to really make this thing sing. And we got it to play Lyle Landley, the huckster, the main character. We got Phil Hartman, and this is for Phil tonight. Woo! One of the all time greatest performers I ever worked with. So, Phil, this is for you. Oh, I boy. take you now to Springfield on a cold autumn evening. <laughs> Lyle Landley is pitching the town hall, the people of Springfield, his idea of a better tomorrow. Well, I've sold monorails to Brockway, Ogdenville, North Haverbrook, and by gum, it put them on the map. Well, sir, there's nothing on earth like a genuine, bona fide, electrified six car monorail. What I say? Monorail! What's it called? Monorail! That's right, monorail! <laughs> Chance the track would bend? Not on your life, my Hindu friend. <laughs> what about a spring that slobs? You'll be given cushy jobs. Were you sent here by the devil? No good, sir. I'm on the level. The ring came off my pudding can. Take my penknife, my good man. If Springfield only tries, throw your hand, raise your voice. Honorary. What's it called? Honorary. 